Mark Williams here in the back uh, to your to your left a little bit. Okay, from, there you are. All right. Yeah. From below the line and uh -huh. British cinematographer. So we talked a little bit of independent spirits about timelines and multiverses, and you talked about trying to keep all of that in order and reaching out for some help to do that. Can you expand on that tonight, how you, how you captured all this journey and wrangled it into making sense for us as an audience, as an editor? Yeah, I mean, I really just, I use the crutch that is uh, Michelle, really, um, and her, her ability to translate this insane script into emotion and to an, uh, an emotional journey so at any point I just would would focus on her and you know I also had Dan and Daniel by my side uh, and they you know this they've been working on this film for five six years so they knew exactly what they wanted and they were also just really excited to be surprised and really excited to ex to to explore it in a new way in the edit and so that was a, a, a really wonderful experience well, all right, we have 258 followed by 272. Hi there, uh, Hi. John Boone from A-Frame. Uh, you said on stage this is your second film. How do you feel like this process and this experience has changed you as an editor as you head into whatever comes next? I hope it doesn't change me too much. I feel like I have um, a pretty healthy blend of like insecurity and confidence and like need to prove myself and also disregard for what other people think and and if they get out of whack then I'm screwed and so this is a really bad thing for me and I need I need to be brought back down to earth because the insecurity is such a it kind of honestly important part of the way I work which is like uh, the fear of failing my friends my directors the actors I felt an enormous responsibility to Michelle and Key especially because they had been you know, kind of treated so wrong by all of us uh, for so long. And I was so grateful to be um, given the responsibility of helping tell a part of their story. And, uh, and so that's what I meant on stage when I said I hope I did right by, by you both and by the whole cast because I felt, um, you know, it's, uh, they did an incredible thing by sticking it out and by not giving up. And uh, I'm just really honored and humbled to have been able to be a part of that. Okay, we have 272, followed by a question from our virtual press room. Uh, Karen oh, hey. hey. How are you doing? How are you? Good. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, yesterday at IAVA, you talked about how your journey with the Daniels started at a roller rink. Mm -hmm. So with that context, would you talk about just, you know, reflect on your journey with them and, you know, culminating with tonight? Yeah, uh, they're my friends first before everything, and um, I care really deeply about them. And you know, no matter what happens, I, this movie really felt like an excuse to just spend time with people that I cared about. And uh, Dan and Daniel, are two people that I care really deeply about, and they also they they allowed us to make this film in a really humane way. You know, reasonable hours, time with our family. No yelling, no screaming, no, you know, fights. It was all just let's love each other and let's make a great film to help the world. And um, and I, I've been trying to take that forward with me to every project I do, you know. There's a problem in our industry that the, the more you kill yourself for a movie, the braver you are. And that's bullshit, you know. We can, all, we can make a films and we can, and everyone's job, we can do our jobs and we can live our lives and the more fully we are able to live our lives and the more humanely we treat ourselves and the people around us, the better we can do our jobs. And, uh, and they were really, that starts at the top with them. So yeah, I really, I really value that in them. Thank you. Oh, sorry, friendly reminder to refrain from broadcasting or taking telephone calls while we're um, in the middle of interviews. Um, and now uh, for the virtual press room, we will be taking a question from the wrap. Hello, Paul. Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you. It's it's Joe McGovern from the Rap. Congratulations. Thank you. So it's it's incredibly rare for a comedy to win this category. I think the last one was Who Framed Roger Rabbit 35 years ago. Hmm. Uh, you can, maybe I can get a fact check on that. But um, <laughs> if, no, if that, right I, I think it's true. And can you talk about maybe some pride you might feel about that piece of trivia, but also how important it is as an editor to make sure that all of the comedic beats, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's more than just a comedy, obviously, 
but the absurdism, um, mm-hmm. how important it is for you in your job to make sure that, that all that stuff lands right. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I kind of cut my teeth at Absolutely Productions, which is Tim and Eric's company working on the Eric Andre show. And the editors there are, are to me, geniuses of comedy. And um, Luke Lynch was a really influential editor to me who taught me everything I know about editing comedy. And the, the key with this film, I think, is that what Dan and Daniel are really good at is taking something silly and treating it very seriously. And, um, and that tends to lend itself to the comedy. I never thought of this as a comedy. They never pitched it to me as a comedy. They pitched it to me as a story about a a mother and a daughter and a family and so we treated it as seriously as that and and the humor you know flows out of it the way that it does in 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 life you know in some of the darkest times in our lives you know we we find these moments to laugh with each other especially when we're with family because we know that that there's a a deeper connection there and that even if things are tough that sometimes the humor is what brings us together so that's how we try to treat it just as seriously as we could i don't know any you know about the history of the Oscars. I think it's as far as in terms of, you know, the last comedy to win. But um, but in my mind, this isn't a comedy. It's a family. It's just a story of a family. Okay, next up, we have 385 right here in the center of the room, followed by Hello. 338. Hey, Paul, it's hey. Jasmine. Yeah, Ryan. hey again. Congratulations Thank on you. the win. Thank you. You said being nominated was very strange what, a while ago. Like, how yeah. does it feel to win tonight? And talk a little bit about the alternate ending that you, that could have been, because the original cut was two hours, 45 minutes? Yeah, it, it's, it's less of an alternate ending, and there was a scene towards the end where they all, you know, everyone come to, comes together and sings Barbie Girl, which I'm kind of wondering if we'll all do tonight. Um, because they, you know, we all use our ex- extra tickets to bring as many crew members as we could. So I think there's like 60 crew members here, which is why everyone's applauds so big. You know, whenever any the, the movie comes up. Um, but yeah, I, it's wonderful. It's incredible to to win. And and one of the things that I wish I had mentioned on stage was that I, one of the honors of this experience and one of the great things that the Academy does and ACE and, and the Guild is they bring all the editors together. So getting to spend time with the other nominees was a real honor because they are so incredibly talented. Um, so yeah, it was, it was wonderful. Cool. Okay. okay. Next we have three, three, six, or, sorry, three, three, eight. Hi. That's you. Yeah. Hello, congratulations on, on the Oscar and uh, obviously everything ever all at once made enormous history tonight, won so many awards, such a great film. And um, my name is Nicola Morales, I forgot to say that. It's a <laughs> long night, Culture Focus magazine. But what do you think is, um, from your perspective, the magic behind the film that um, made it such an important film with so many important themes like representation, diversity, um, immigration and so forth. I mean, there's a lot if, if we dive into th- the film, but specifically, what is the magic? What is the magic? It's a great question because we, as we were cutting it, and I think even as we were writing it, shooting it, they knew that there was some magic there, but it was hard to figure out what exactly it was. There's so much in this film. Um, but in general, I think it's just people telling a good story. It's as simple as that. You know, I think people. You know, we see a lot of movies that, that tell um, stories about certain types of people, right? And they tend to focus on uh, kind of the story of the man, the story of the white man, and, and having this beautiful story of an immigrant family um, was amazing. And I think it's just, for, you know, like uh, James Hong was describing in his speech, uh, it's just, it's long, long, long overdue. And like, you know, this kind of thing, unfortunately, does happen to guys like me a lot, too much, most of the time. And so I think that we, what Dan and Daniel are really conscious of, is paying attention to who are we mentoring, who are we hiring, uh, how are we, what kind of stories are we lending our, our time and our energy to tell. And that's in a, you know, I don't know if that's, the one, if there's one thing that is the magic to this film, but that's part of it. 
I think it's a combination of good people making good films with other good people uh, and telling good stories. So, yeah. And a great cast. Yeah, Michelle and Key were incredible. Uh, Stephanie Shu was just insane. And Jamie and James and everybody, Tally, who plays Becky, who, by the way, her, her, her name in the movie is Becky Stragor, which is Rogers backwards. She's named after my wife, Becky Rogers. So I made sure to give her a lot of screen time. Yeah. Wonderful. Thanks. Thank you so much, and congratulations you. on your win. <laughs>